uh, that purple triangle shapes is very common in some areas. It can be little cubes with crystal growth on the same rocks. Those are some neat little cubes there. This one here is a pretty cool one. So there you see a, a field of microcline and then nestled inside that field is a nice little cube of fluorite. It can be very large and just have pretty much a uh, kind of massive block in itself. That's all good fluorite. There's some with kind of a blue hue to it. It can be kind of a bulbous or round, no real crystal facing to it. Although this one here is on a real good bed of crystals. But that's all fluorite, both of those. That's all broke up fluorite there too. So those can be uh, fluorite can be in that form too. It can be a fluorospar, which is what these are. This, no, not that one. This is actually something totally different. Um, so this purple in here is fluorospar. And so too is this greenish material here. This is a fluorospar. Kind of a different type of fluorite. So this here is also fluorite. It's a massive piece of fluorite. Just kind of um, white, not really very eventful, but even the entire, it's all fluorite, through and through, um, very heavy, so that's also a different type of fluorite, here's some more fluorite, uh, that's a very, big nice piece of fluoride very colorful uh, floor spar and floor spar and there's another nice chunk of fluoride okay so here's some more pieces of fluoride this one here is a very gemmy, really cool piece. Got to be honest with you, uh, this one here was store bought though, so it kind of doesn't count. <clears throat> Here's another couple pieces that were. This is also fluorite, real nice gemmy piece. Well, not gemmy, but uh, cool, uh, kind of an aqua green colored to it. That's also fluorite. Um, this is what they call banded fluorite. Um, you can see uh, kind of a, not really well defined layers, but it does have some layers in there. Uh, that is also store bought. And so too are these three pieces. Well, they were actually gifted to me, not really store bought. Um, you might think that they are handmade or human made, but no, they do come in these octahedron or whatever this type of formation is this is a uh, kind of fluorite in its most pristine form is this double pyramid top and bottom type deal uh, comes in many different colors there you see uh, a purple uh, kind of a cherry blue and then uh, kind of weak yellow Uh, the edges aren't so smooth like what you would find on a quartz crystal. If you look at that closely, and I don't know if that's focusing in or not, but if you look at that closely, it's almost like fine grit sandpaper. It's a little bit rough to the touch. It's not smooth, it's not glassy, and quite common with uh, fluorite, you'll get that texture. It's more of a kind of a rough texture than just a smooth crystal facet that you'd see on regular quartz crystals.
Okay, so again, we're going to see, uh, <clears throat> going to do a little scratch test on this right here. Of course, this right here is a uh, uh, kind of a halfway good uh, Smoky Quartz crystals, uh, crystal. It's uh, been exposed to uh, some sort of alluvial process throughout time. It's been pockmarked and it's not very, uh, uh, very clean and smooth and jemmy, I guess. So if you take a regular knife and you try to scratch it, you see that it might leave a leave a mark, but that's really not a mark. That's most, mostly just the knife rub, rubbing off on the stone. It did not scratch that stone. Quartz is a fairly hard substance. It will take a uh, maybe a little bit of hardened steel to do that. Let's try that with fluoride. So if you take fluoride, this same piece of fluoride right here, I'm going to cut myself. Okay, now that mark there, that's not going to go away. That's a scratch. The other one was just uh, really something you could wipe off with powder. Let's right here that scratch that. So you see fluoride is much softer than quartz. That's one way to tell. Normally, you're not even going to be doing that in the field because you'll think mainly it's just a piece of dirty quartz, so you would just discard it. But the heft of it, it's heavier than normal quartz, so that's what would make you think to check it out some more. Okay, so here is the two pieces of material that I'm going to be asking Caitlin to identify. They're both about the same size. One is a piece of regular quartz. It has a nice little uh, crystal on the side of it. It's just a regular quartz. And the other is just a piece of common fluorite. And uh, we'll see if she can guess which one is heavier compared to the other. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate a field test of how to tell the difference between quartz and fluorite. Um, in the field, if you pick up a rock and you think it might be quartz or you think it might be fluorite, you can easily compare the one to the other. Quartz has a specific gravity of about uh, 2.6 in average range. Fluorite can be about 3.3. Um, so without you knowing which is which, two pieces, both about the same size, uh, don't look at them, just close your hands and kind of weigh it out a little bit. Do you feel a difference? Is one heavier than the other? Yeah. Okay. If, uh, by Just by knowing that one's heavier than the other, the heavy one should be fluoride. Show me the piece of fluoride. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good catch. And that is true. That's a piece of fluoride. And this is a piece of quartz. So you passed that test. Very good. Thank you, Caitlin. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, here's the piece of fluorite. It's uh, not exactly very eventful, it's kind of a dull, white, uh, clear piece of uh, fluorite. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flashlight, it's a very high powered spotlight, and I'm going to place it over the piece of fluorite. Then I'm going to take a blanket and I'm going to wrap it all around that so no light can escape. The only reason that I used a towel to put over it was so that my eyes could get adjusted to the dark. It doesn't glow for very long. It uh, is hard to capture in light. I had to experiment with my camera and get it into the lowest light settings I possibly could. Different pieces of fluorite glow at different rates but that's also one way that you can tell if you actually have a piece of fluorite or if you have a piece of quartz quartz won't do this so there you see that it actually glows in the dark after the light has been turned off it won't glow for long that's called phosphorescent another property of fluorite phosphorescent
So another um, characteristic of fluorite is that it, it demonstrates the characteristics of piezoelectricity. Uh, piezoelectricity or piezoelectricity, um, there's different ways to say it. I, I learned it, uh, piezoelectricity. And that basically means the squeezing of certain materials like, uh, <clears throat> like here we have that same piece of fluorite. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, once it gets dark, we'll do this, but I'm going to take this pair of vice grips and I'm actually going to basically crush that. Just before this fractures, it's going to emit a glow. Um, it's probably not going to be able to be captured on the camera because the glow is pretty brief and it's not a flash of light, it's basically a glow. Uh, fluorite does do that. So too does quartz. Um, here we have just some uh, various uh, different pieces of quartz. Um, I'm going to do both of these. So this is a piece of quartz. It's got some glaze on it, so really nothing spectacular. And once it gets dark, I'm going to actually take this into a dark room, hold it over a trash can, put some some protective eye goggles on and crush it and as it's crushing this is going to kind of glow a little bit it's not sparking there may in fact be a little bit of a spark but that would not be the same thing I'm talking about that's not piezoelectricity piezoelectricity is once it's being squeezed this will actually glow in the dark same, so too will fluorite fluorite does it readily uh, but so also too does quartz so that's not a, uh, a deciding factor in and of itself, but it's still pretty cool to do that. And we'll do that tonight as it gets dark. Uh, I'll show you. Um, use these pliers, and we're going to squeeze these. We're going to turn out the light, and we're going to squeeze these into this trash can. And just before it um, fractures, we're going to watch it glow. Tell you what, Caitlin. If um, no, let's do the fluorite last. Let's first, let's first do the that one. Yeah, but we have to turn out the lights. So how are we gonna? Okay, so what I have now in the vice grips is the uh, fluorite. Predictably, it should glow a little bit more, uh, maybe a little bit more brighter than the uh, quartz piece did. Again, each piece of fluorite or each piece of quartz may have some uh, variant one way or the other. And I still have Caitlin here to. Uh, to um, help me verify this. Okay, ready? You ready? Mm-hmm. See it? Yeah, I see it. Cool. Uh, probably couldn't picture it on the camera, but um, it did. It did glow, and um, so that's uh, piezoelectricity. So the last difference between fluorite and quartz that we're going to talk about is the ability of fluorite to fluoresce under certain um, UV wavelengths. UV lights that allow minerals to fluoresce are usually very expensive. Here's a couple of inexpensive varieties that don't do a great job, but they are um, uh, a cheaper version that allow it to work sometimes maybe they will show some things to fluoresce but not everything okay so we're going to do a little experiment here I have a whole bunch of different uh, that's fluorite there's fluorite there there's fluorite there just a whole lot of pieces of different minerals in this uh, little display cabinet and we'll be able to see that some things will fluoresce but not really very much the reason for that is is the uh, wavelength of these inexpensive lights I don't know if you can see that or not I think we oops magnet I think we can I think we can see that a little bit some of the whites readily stand out all the greens in the amazonite there are just totally colorless really um, that little cube there stands out a little bit 
Let's see. Uh, some of the, the whites and like petrified wood there. Okay, that piece of sulfur readily does stand out. Nothing much over there. Nothing really spectacular. Uh, the white coral, of course, the whites always do a pretty good job of standing out. Oh, there's a piece of amber, and um, amber is readily noted for uh, being able to fluoresce in UV light. Now, here's something that really surprised me. As we come down here, it's like, boom, look at that. So this is actually a piece of volcanic glass that I used to make a, uh, oh, just a kind of a knife point when I was a kid. But I did not know that volcanic glass readily fluoresces. This is the perfect wavelength UV wavelength to make that glass fluoresce doesn't do so great on fluorite but fluorite does fluoresce just like this if you had the right UV wavelength it would do it